viewers welcome back i'm dr mani pavitra the founder of million moms and it gives me great pleasure to have someone who represents confidence in its fullest form you look at her and you you, you can sense that fears uh, you know uh, what do you call fears confidence and uh, how a woman should be when she is in her full potential that's what you get to see and welcome samira thank you so much i mean i can't tell you how <laughs> happy i am to have you and see you like this i'm so glad to be here you yeah. know because uh, when i met you also I, i felt like this is going to be a fun interview because she's not going to hold back <laughs> and i'm not going to either so this is going to be fun awesome awesome you know like especially in south where you don't have like literally there is not even a single snap of a pregnant yeah. heroine available yes. in in telugu industry you don't have even a single snap of a pregnant heroine i mean from heroine suddenly they they are out with like you know you just see like some god bharai shot yeah. full of like a like it's almost like a jewelry ad <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it's with baby and finished, it's finished. <laughs> and even that also we don't get the surprising hmm. part is even that also we're not able to get and we look up to you guys you know the entire population no matter how educated no matter how rich no matter how many degrees they have we still love to follow uh, the heroines the ones who are on screen and for us imagine suddenly from here to here you just get this glam shot and again another glam shot and we don't get to see and the reality and then you wonder how come it doesn't happen to me yeah. <laughs> like cuz everyone's lying <laughs> and we try we think we want to be that that image yeah. which is not true so much Where, pressure so much pressure yeah. of trying to be a super mom trying to look good trying yeah. to do this that and you know it's like the baby came out and wow you just look so sexy again no <laughs> <laughs> lots of trainers lots of diets lots of pills <laughs> yeah and first thing first and foremost i would love to congratulate you for being the bad breaking person in this I, field I, i you know i didn't choose to be it unfortunately i was telling you that this started i was off all social media because from my first pregnancy i did what most people do yes. i just shut up mm. because i got scared especially because south was such a big um i mean though i'm from from bollywood the kind of uh, love i get from south fans will always have me responsible towards them right i don't know why because a lot of hindi film actresses do south films and they say oh we just did it from the side mm. for me the respect is actually i feel much bigger and uh, the whole thing is much stronger for me there so i felt that i needed to just not talk about it as most people do yes in fact many people didn't even know i got married even mm. many people didn't even know i had a son mm. uh but what happened is i told you unfortunately or fortunately about 3 months ago i was at a random event and some guy asked me so do you think you'll be able to look like karina kapoor after uh, you give birth ma'am uh or do you think you will actually this was literally told to me or you think that you will be an aishwarya rai oh my god and aishwarya for me is she you know she's one of she's somebody like i i i think she's amazing i was so angry yeah. and i lashed out but i lashed out in full you know i just gave it full and all, all the cameras were on <laughs> and i'm like where do you think you came from uh. you came from my mother you think she looked hot when she gave birth to you <laughs> and, 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 and i said you know don't set such standards karina is a gorgeous mother you know our kids go to the same school and she has set a standard which is her standard it can't be your standard or my standard and then from there it just got ticked up and then i started getting questioned about it you know and my husband said oh no here we go i see the lion is being poked <laughs> you know and i'm like you know it's just that it helped me wake up and realize that i was also being a coward by shutting up right and i did not have the best first pregnancy i had postpartum i had placenta previa i was very depressed mm. i put on weight mm. and i chickened out and i sat quietly just shut like this so i decided hey you know what i'm going to get on to instagram and i'm just going to say whatever i want <laughs> which which actually has been very liberating for me right uh, and that's where maybe slowly it evolved into you know doing a photo session and and then i remember like people saying oh so do you want to cover like with some sheer and i'm like hello <laughs> here we go <laughs> and i've not even put up actually the pictures that i wanted to put up this is me being calm down yeah so but it's it's just very it feels so good i know it feels so good and it's not done with any intention of trying to be different mm. and it's not with the intention of wanting to be trolled 
it's with the intention that I struggled and I have nothing to lose now. You don't want to give me a South film, producers don't. It doesn't matter, I'll find something else. But it's nice to come out and call it and say that, you know, it is not so beautiful and it's not so pristine. Right. And these standards that we set for ourselves when we get married and this, these beautiful ads that, you know, cater to that perfect Godvarai and that perfect baby and it is perfect. But it's your own version of perfect. perfect. Uh, you, so if you compare it to somebody else, you're going to be uh, definitely not feeling very happy about it. And uh, you said it very, very rightly. It's your kind of perfect. Exactly. And that is what every mom needs to know. If you're going through a difficult phase, that's okay. That is your phase. But it cannot be compared to another mother's. Yeah. You know, it's like everyone has their own kind of perfect. If you're having a great pregnancy, you're having a good time, that's great. That's your kind of perfect. But some of us have issues and someone like you, so many issues together, but you have battled it so bravely. Like, but I didn't the first time around. Yeah. And that's where I want to admit that the mm. first time around, uh, I think when I got married, I had this vision, you know, I had this vision that I would be perfectly beautiful and I would have this little baby bump and I'd walk around in heels on red carpets and it would be so amazing it was a disaster because from the time I got pregnant my doctor said oh my god you know we started with prolactinoma to begin with then it was low progesterone levels mm. then it was low amniotic fluid then it was bleeding then it was placenta previa and each week started getting more and mm -hmm. more like daunting yes you know like shocking like really his pregnancy like I thought it was beautiful mm. nobody told me about this mm. you know mm. nobody told me it was going to be nauseating mm. <laughs> and it was I was nauseous I was I was very depressed right. and I began to go into a hole because maybe taking injections every day just mm. got me to put on so much weight right and you lying, know it's like yeah. literally you were trying to hold the baby against all odds that's what and all lying, this lying on the bed yeah you know with my legs yes. up because if I do any, you know, weird yeah, moves, I could, mm. uh, it was too low. It was yes. uh, placenta previous yeah. where the baby is really on the cervix. Right. And I think I was so scared because one has this vision of being pregnant in your 20s and then you get pregnant in your 30s and then everyone says, oh my God, mm. you waited so long. Mm. Hello, I was busy being an actress. You know, <laughs> yes. it's so, so all these fears combated and uh, when the baby came out, I was 32 kilos up. 32 kgs which for me I mean it was yeah. I couldn't even wrap my head around it right and from the point of like having this beautiful baby in your hand and then people saying oh my god when are you going to lose the weight now I just took a nose dive mm. I didn't want to be photographed mm. I don't have any photographs with my newborn at that time and I wouldn't let people take photographs of me I was so like ashamed as to what had happened right. and there was this dichotomy of being this fancy actress to oh my god what will people say to me now I mean they I don't recognize myself how will they recognize me True. and it was bad yeah. and it took me almost one year to get up and at least and start even moving towards uh, taking care of myself and losing weight and I didn't leave this house for one year Wow. I wouldn't step out. I it's such a big thing. Imagine it's being the top actress to suddenly be I, shut down. I just shut down and yeah. my husband, bless him, you know, I was at my worst point and I don't think even he realized when he would marry me that I would, you know, he you saw this good. strong woman and then he saw me just cow down and just bend, bow, like bow down to uh, just being so depressed. So it has been that journey, the first journey. Hmm. The comeback has been even stronger wherein I had to actually take therapy. I'll be very honest. I went for counseling because mm. I was very depressed. Yes. And I never let that come between me and my son or my husband. I tried my best to be the best mother, but I knew something was wrong. I'm like, so, pe so people used to ask me, so, so you just gave up on everything? I'm like, yeah, I'm a housewife now. Mm. But the truth is I was hiding from the fact that I was secretly just so scared of being judged because I just couldn't get back to what I was and then I, do, I realized with homeopathy and with counseling that you have to become a new version of yourself mm. and it doesn't necessarily have to be that red carpet girl mm. or that you know sari clad sex bomb or that girl next door that everyone loves from, from Varnam Iram mm. I need to recreate I need mm. to reinvent mm. and then this whole journey came about but it is so important to talk about it you know, and I'm so glad you're asking me these questions because 
otherwise anybody from the telugu media will only ask me about ntr or chiranjeevi so <laughs> you know i i i respect you for coming out and and uh, asking these hard hitting questions because you know women out there need to know that it exists exactly and in million moms this is the thing that we are trying to tell that it's okay i mean uh, you have been a working mother from working mother if because of pregnancy because of any issues you ha- you have to take a step back that's normal for that phase Yeah. that phase that's perfectly normal don't compare it with the before phase or don't compare it don't look too far into the future and think oh i would have done this or don't look at your colleagues yeah. and others who are do- really doing well in life and think oh my god i should be doing that but i'm not able to do this that's you what know? social media is yeah. it's about fomo exactly you are just fear of missing out this one's going there this one has this perfect filter on yes you know i get up like i get upset when i see everybody posting perfect pictures and that's why i started you know i i i saw my pr team get a heart attack the first time where i just put this early morning face with dark circles and no makeup and i said i'm an exhausted mom and, and i and want that's the yeah, truth. it's the truth it's the i truth. can look like this yes and i'm also going to look like that mm-hmm. and that's what you are also so don't worry about it we're all in this together exactly and someone like you who's been like the top actress to be talking like this it's such a honor samira because yes, we don't you know, know. It, it really means a lot because what you don't realize is words like words that you're talking are word medicine where a lot of there must be some mother who's sitting in her, in her home and who won't have gotten out she'll listen to you and she'll think yeah this is normal yeah this is normal for me as a mother yeah. and just like how you have gotten out and you're not afraid to get pregnant again in yeah. spite of so many problems that you had it, in your first pregnancy that was never a yeah. question also mm. i knew i will get pregnant again because my husband and me we were so um, attached to our siblings that we already made this decision you know but and, uh, and we wanted to actually do it 2 years right after hans mm. but i was physically not ready and i was right. emotionally not ready mm. but we knew it was coming mm. and uh, that's a decision we had already made yeah. and people really even now when i got pregnant like they're like wow really yeah, <laughs> yeah don't you remember how bad it was the first time <laughs> i'm like yeah it's not it doesn't have to be the same, same. you know absolutely right just because something when something was not up to the normal thing that is mean the second time it's going to be the same yeah and you have to be open to life yeah open to you know experiencing things as Absolutely. they are yeah. and and the best part is you agree to take help because a lot of mothers they don't even talk about it mm. they think they are the only ones in the whole world who are suffering Absolutely. and the biggest challenge with social media it's great like it help you liberate now but at the same time when you are not the one who's posting it They're like this there are very few women who post so much mm. and they look at the ones who are posting and they think wow well, they are leading an ideal life i'm not able to lead that kind of a life exactly you and know? and and i didn't get on to social media for 3 4 years because i felt very intimidated mm. i would see like friends of mine like shilpa and like you know shilpa shetty and uh, you know a lot of uh, you know actresses and i used to be like wow just look at that you know mm-hmm. they're just like living it and here i am just <laughs> breastfeeding and upset <laughs> yeah. and i realized that you know i got onto instagram 3 months ago and sometimes the dms i get uh they they actually bring me to tears mm. because there'll be some random mom sitting random in the corner or somewhere saying you don't understand i have decided to now even do an evening walk and take that time for me mm. Yeah. I need my me time yeah. and I was trying to just keep up with something I couldn't and thank you for at least giving me that start you know and it's been it's been very nice and it's been therapeutic for me yeah because before maybe my intention was always like how many fans can i get you know what is it how many like hits can i get you know how many right. and that's changed now yes. now it's like we're all human beings and we are all together at some point trying to look you know we're trying to feel good we're trying to feel something i don't know what and and when we're looking for that it's nice to find something real yes and something anything can inspire you yes so even if my words can give that one little thing to one mom somewhere have a hundred pe- people troll me for it it is perfectly fine by me <laughs> i'm not scared bring it on awesome awesome so um, i'm going to take it a little more deeper because you are you have been very candid and frank and that's <laughs> a little too much if you are but it's okay no it's not too much because this is what is needed and i'm so glad i'm able to talk this way to you because this is what is real this is what all of us go through yeah. and that's a fact some point or the other maybe for a month maybe for few 
maybe for few months for few it could be few years yeah. and for some people a decade would be lost before they wake up to what's been happening to them because they can't even figure out no so if they watch something like this it will it will not take them that long i They'll hope think, so yeah so definitely. yeah i mean i'm happy to say uh, speak the truth yeah. because i don't think uh, i also think somewhere interestingly social media uh, went to uh, the years that i got off social media was the years it just came on right and everyone was all about that perfect filter perfect this right. perfect ways photoshop tuck in pull in thinify beautify i mean and everything came so so beautiful that now interestingly enough it's time for the real yes and i feel that social media opened up this year yes and i feel it because i can see now a lot of people following and trying to uh speak about like the fact that it it is it is traumatic when you constantly look at pictures and look at stories of people living this perfect life which is it, not true it is not true so it is almost like opening a magazine and looking at the perfect ad which is photoshopped into 1000 times because now it's been blamed at you from every corner every corner true whether it's facebook or instagram and or it's not like just it's that youtube you know it it could be that just that perfect moment which is captured yeah but we're not talking about the 99 times no. so those moments are not captured Absolutely. and that's not being portrayed out it's not so it's almost like advertising but advertising on steroids you know it's it's not nice and i feel now they are ready to, to accept the fact that you know i put a picture up recently i didn't even notice i mean i have a stretch mark on my shoulder it's very weird but i have two stretch marks on my shoulder yeah and if like some soldier you. <laughs> you know uh, funnily i don't have them on my waist but i have them on my shoulders and in that picture i didn't even notice i just put it up and two three people noticed and said wow ma'am you're not even covering up your stretch marks and i said really how do you notice it like it's who cares Yeah. Like why are we trying to cover it up? Like yeah. these are uh, scars of war. Yes. War with my weight. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm happy to bear them. Yes. Uh so we need to come from that uh, space of just knowing that everybody should move towards a better space otherwise I mean my son's going to grow up and be completely fake. Right. you know and feel pressure to adhere and i don't want him to feel that yeah know? so uh because if you are talking about stretch marks there's so many creams which are peddled out uh, i want you to talk about how unrealistic it is that once you have stretch marks they're going to stay for life no matter what you do mm. no matter you go for laser treatment you go for all the creams yeah. in the world you try it's impossible and for mothers stretch marks are a sign of like yeah. that's a weight gain they are the warm warm marks but for mothers it's it it is a fact that you have to live with yeah. you know i had an amazingly beautiful app but because post pregnancy post both my kids it's totally scarred yeah but that's me i but feel I don't so understand why it's a bad thing yeah exactly i've never understood it you know and i've i've always tried to uh, so you know i want to give a superb trick i don't know how i came across this with my first pregnancy you know i was uh, gifted a lot of fancy creams and oils and i had like one full like table full of my 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 husband my husband calls it the the dukan okay <laughs> because literally it's a cupboard full of stuff and um i use castor oil mm. i use thick castor oil and i use it from the first shot i'm i got pregnant i mean i don't even wait for the stomach to start mm-hmm. coming out so before i sleep i literally thopo like put on castor oil which is sticky and disgusting yes but to combat that stickiness i use a normal lotion like mm. it could be any like even a hotel lotion mm. i don't even on care. top of the on top of it wow. so it layers it and it creates like this film mm. and it's not that sticky anymore I let it dry and then i put uh, the night suit on mm. and something about it is just i don't know i mean I, yeah you know what the elasticity which comes from yeah. that that yeah. is what will prevent the skin to break out yeah So, so I do two layers. Wow. And 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 though I smell like an oil factory, I I combat it with a lot of like <laughs> like you know try my best so that Akshay is not like oh my god. <laughs> But like uh, I feel like you know it's been the one thing that's I mean I'm I hope this time I don't get it but I have to say I'm proud I don't have one mark on my stomach <laughs> and that's come because of I mean castor oil who you know it's a big is the cheapest thing you can get in yeah. the market cheapest thing which is very rich in fat yeah and that I think that seeps down into deeper layers and make sure yeah. it doesn't yeah and happen. I've been talking about it on my social media and I mm. I know it's ridiculous it's castor oil but it works so another topic which is a very gray area which I can't talk with most people but I think I can uh, you know touch there So like you said when you put on a lot of castor oil and you smell uh, and the weight gain in pregnancy and 
with all of that how how does your f- husband find you <laughs> <laughs> like the desirability factor for most of us in pregnancy we get so scared to have sex yeah we don't know whether you know uh, some of my mothers in the class i teach lamas childbirth education for couples so some of them come and when i ask the husband to give a good rub on the belly they like oh <laughs> this like i'm like you didn't touch her till now kya you need to have sex yeah. from the past 5 6 months yeah. and they don't that's weird yeah. <laughs> you know because it's so important to keep the intimacy on yes not because you have to because actually it releases a lot of hormones, hormones. that help you you know and secondly it is all comes down to your comfort level True. the fact that we look at pregnancy as a time where you're out of what you're supposed to be is wrong mm. you're supposed to become big and i don't mean big in as in body right i mean that stomach like it should come out and i have to say it takes both hands to clap because the husband needs to know it's okay and uh, he needs to feel comfortable and he needs to make the woman feel beautiful right and she needs to not come from a space which is oh my god i'm so fat it has to come with i'm creating something amazing right. i'm giving the best gift i can to my family to myself and to my husband and the beauty of that bond needs to collaborate which would make it intimate and which would make it you know um a great space to be with each other physically true and that comes not by saying yeah you have to have you don't have to have no mm. it comes slowly yeah with communication communication and um, i i i i married a very straight up guy he is not interested in bollywood he has never seen any of my south films he doesn't watch any films except hollywood so he has no idea about all that he's just a very simple guy mm. so for him when it comes to me Uh, he's been very very um, supportive and 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 he, and he's been very sensitive that's the word you know which 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 frankly any guy would have not been able to handle what happened to me the first time right. when I mean, this time he thinks i'm completely on some other zone he's like <laughs> wow who are you <laughs> cuz i'm like yeah <laughs> and he's like that's me and this yeah. is me i am I'm, like, oh, i'm getting it all and i'm like doing like curls and waves and he's like oh, what happened to you <laughs> i'm like i think it's a girl <laughs> <laughs> but but it really depends on your 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 partner and that yeah. comes with communication true and um it's very sad but i think most infidelities happen with men post a woman having a baby and i know this because i've had friends who mm. have faltered and their explanations you know to me the guy have always been like but she shut off you know she shut down and i became second and the baby is all about the baby you know before it was me and i'm trying to understand both sides wherein i am not trying to say is what they're doing is right but you know a woman gets completely consumed and she does somewhere change course right and the man feels left out and then he feels you know you know like he's he doesn't feel like that like that that good feel anymore and he wants to suddenly somebody is giving him attention and then his mind bears that side right but my whole point is that both sides need to work on it mm. because it is the most it is the, it, it is a time where they don't expect it because we have this oh you know i don't think women are ready that they get so consumed right and a man has to understand she will get consumed and the woman has to understand that even while she gets consumed she needs to give a certain attention to because men are a little bit like it right yeah <laughs> you can't help it you just cannot i mean you know they i always say i have two kids i have akshay and i have hans because uh, they they also need a little bit of nurturing and that comes from the indian mother it's all the indian mothers faults <laughs> every indian mother has set that son up to have that wife you know like take care of him right. which is at any level it's there right so i think it's important for that communication mm. so that infidelities don't happen that right. split doesn't happen and mm. that disconnect doesn't happen right so this is something which again i advocate very strongly i tell mothers make your husband part of your baby's Journey. life yeah. you know it's not it's But not the just want it yeah see they don't like, Yeah see because the guys are not used to it yeah and if our generation of mothers is not going to change it out yeah it's like the next generation is also going to like suffer like my dad very proudly always says maine ek diaper bhi nahi change kiya yeah. and i was like my dad i'm like that is not funny yeah you know yeah. uh, because and it's not something to flaunt no yeah. and then you have akshay who's like mr modern dad who he's like you know when hans was born 
he ha he he wanted like that perfect you know the carrier and then he had a hat for himself and he had a hat for hans and he changed diapers and he was very interested in uh, you know uh, how much milk hans had and i was so like shocked because i'm like wow i didn't know i married this guy you know mm. so so men now funnily enough find it very fashionable to be uh, the cool daddies yes They're and i'm glad and i'm glad that also they don't it. understand it makes them attractive it makes them super when you sexy. see you for sexy <laughs> it's a chick magnet exactly. which is also wrong but still <laughs> you know i used to notice that when akshay used to walk around with a stroller the girls oh my god so cute you know raksha was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just that men need to understand that yes. women get drawn and people get so fascinated with guys who are part of the child thing because we are not used to it yes and some and also me- i feel emotionally the poor men are missing out on such a precious and beautiful time Absolutely. which we women get in abundance thanks to the kids and that's what is it i feel that the woman has to give a chance so yes. there are a lot of women who also nag hmm. you know putting the diaper like that you know hmm. you know holding like that what are you doing because hmm. we are trying to make sure everything is right i mean Correct. let the guy make a mistake let him put that diaper wrong but let him try right. you know right. so it'd be fun yeah so that's when when i talk about delegating i i say Don't uh, pick up mistakes when they're at least attempting to do something. Absolutely, the poor guys don't have an example to follow, no. and they're trying to learn things. So don't find mistakes in what they're doing, no matter how they do it. Just appreciate it. Like yeah, and sometimes it's shocking how like my my husband is like the a uh, swaddle king. Awesome. I till today I'm not. I can't understand swaddling. I'm like you putting this and you're tightening that. Yes. And Akshay was like, hold on, I run a business. I have a factory. Tuck, 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 tuck. And then this package was given to me. And I was like, wow. wow. <laughs> so, and I came from that first thought, which is like, no, no, you have to like tighten this side and not not. And Akshay was like, very, you know, as 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 a very like uh, technical engineer guy. <laughs> and then later on, I was like, can you please order this? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, and see, men are so good at running companies. They're yeah. so good at managing finances. Doing baby stuff is very easy, easy to them, yeah. provided you let them do it yeah. and you appreciate them for what they're doing. So to make a guy feel part of that journey, and to because you're you're growing this in here, but they feel very disconnected, you know. So it's important. I think it all lies in how you handle the situation. True. and it's very important to delegate and at the same time appreciate even yeah. if something is going wrong absolutely <laughs> so absolutely that, you know it becomes a and habit please no them. nagging that yeah. just works against you <laughs> your men just run away <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my husband was amazingly good with bathing my child it's like both my sons he only has taken care of uh, I, 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 even now i don't get into their bathroom because he is the one who takes care yeah. of their bath time and he is the one who gets That's them so ready sweet. yeah and i i feel um it helps the men grow and evolve too and connect because we have boobs yeah we can breastfeed our child yeah. and no matter what our kid will get connected to us poor guys don't have that yeah. so at least this way changing diapers and bathing and all and of that and by the end of it now uh, my son is more attached to akshay ah huh? right he is he's he's his son i always say it i'm like it's just how he akshay took to it right same thing with my own and you know one. what sometimes people tell me oh my god you're so lucky you know you should be so thankful i'm like why <laughs> it is his job, job to be part of this deal and it's a you know <laughs> yeah but everyone's like you know in india they make it look like oh you're so lucky i'm like no it is i'm not going to say thank you you know i i'm like it is part of True. the program lovely <laughs> you know and we should accept that and that's amazing samira because this is what women need to hear that it's you know it's it's the kid yeah of both of you yeah not just you but even his yeah and let him do it absolutely so uh, another thing it happens in uh, south india and i think all over india but now things are changing we get very scared when we are pregnant to put up a picture on social media oh nazar lagega yeah nazar lagega <laughs> you don't even want to talk my makeup about artist it. just now just went for the back with like a kala tikka <laughs> and she always does it she's like kala tikka lagao you know out there bearing it and i'm like look there are things that go wrong yeah and i don't want to bring it on because i affirmate a lot <clears throat> if they do they do but till then i'm not going to go on this this thing of i need to hide myself because it is really like uh, i say it's thought process which is we need to hide this because it's beautiful yes i need to enjoy it i need to celebrate it i need to embrace it but i do get a lot of people saying don't you think you know this is wrong 
I'm like wrong. <laughs> Here I am in a bikini. <laughs> you know, because I cannot, I cannot hide this time. Yes. And uh, but it's a major su superstition. Like something as ridiculous. I as I wore a swimsuit, and I put the short up. You know, and the amount of women that messaged me and said, "Don't you think it's too tight on your stomach?" I'm like, it's a maternity swimsuit. <laughs> it's built to expand. I. Uh, why would you think that? I, I was in a workout. And it's so good to swim yeah, when you're pregnant. Yeah, it's so good. And the kind of liberation you feel when you swim when you're pregnant. Also, the amniotic fluid, they yes. say the baby feels very comfortable because something about the water and the movement mm -hmm. that, that makes them very relaxed. True. Even you know, in our uh, birthing center, we do births in water. Yes. Because that, that is a zone where the mother feels completely, the calm, yeah. you know, relaxed and in that zone. And she becomes so powerful when that pushing but comes in. Everybody scares everybody. Mm. Everybody scares everybody to a point of even my 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 vegetable guy will say, "Madam, nazar mat you know, hona chahiye," and all. I'm like, what? Like you know, I, I'm like, yeah, I, I battle postpartum depression. This is nothing. I don't want to sit and hide. And uh, you have to know that yes, superstitions at some point. Like for example, when the baby comes. The first 40 days, yes. be careful, bathe. There are um, some Indian uh, rituals which are fantastic and you must follow them. Mm. But the whole thing about the mother being constantly like covered, covered. and like not being able to talk, uh, which I followed the first time, mm. doesn't necessarily have to happen. But yeah. it's in your hands. If you know you want to play it that way, that's great. See, uh, what, how, how I would like to put this is, okay, if you would love to uh, stay quiet and not come out, mm. And that's a choice that's made by you. Yes. Great. Yeah. But let that choice not be imposed on you yeah. by someone else because that is what will lead into depression. And not only that, the hormonal changes, like there are times, I'll be th really euphoric and then I'll come into my room and then top 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 I'll start crying. And, and it's completely and, normal. And it's normal and, and I, I mean, you know, Akshay also sometimes he realizes, he says it's one of those days, I'm like, yeah, I just feel horrible. Uh, and at those times, if you're going to not have that support or be told that you can't go out or can't swim or can't go for an evening walk or can't be seen, uh, then you're going to get worse, you know, because you have to expend that hormonal energy or you're going to end up fighting with your husband. True, <laughs> true. Perfectly true. Yeah. yeah. So how important it is to take your me time, irrespective of whether you're having a child, whether you're pregnant or uh, no matter how, whatever is happening in your life, how important do you think is... Uh, it to take time for yourself, your own Very self. important. Yeah. Like I, I was just in Hyderabad for a conference and I love their hashtag. It's called Me First. Me First. Because I think as women, we feel that we want to be a perfect daughter-in-laws and we want to be like, you know, we want to be handling everything. And we always want this validation, I feel. That, you know, I don't know where this comes from. This comes from a very deep sense of low self-worth. And I don't see men having that too much. It's mainly the women, you know, they feel this pressure to look a certain way, be a certain way, keep up, be the perfect daughter-in-law, I'm so perfect, I'm so this, I'm so that, I'm the best mom, I'm this, I'm that. No, you are imperfect, which is perfect and it's fine. And there are days where you're not going to want to get up and serve that dinner or because a lot of households are expected or you're not going to be able to be that perfect wife or you're not going to be in the mood for sex or you're not going to be the perfect mom and you are going to sometimes break down and it's okay and to make sure that you stay in that neutral zone you have to take time out because that is the the journey towards making sure you don't crack true uh, and that comes in small little steps right which is take that time out to even just stop and breathe breathe true Take the time out to just be in the present and understand that you're not just keeping up with everything. You know, I'm on the phone, I'm Instagramming, I'm with my friend, I'm, I'm wearing the right sari, I'm trying to lose my weight. You have to take a little bit of time where you just stop and you assess. And if you feel it's not working for you, then you reinvent the situation to work for you. You know, as I say, version 2.2 <laughs> comes into play or, you know, we all different versions. Right. You have to keep updating yourself. <laughs> You know, in CII talk, I was one of the panelists and I exactly said this. You have a phone, okay? In that phone, you update your phone every year. You update your, uh, if there's any update, software update, you do it. Mm. When is the last time yeah, you, you updated yourself? Exactly. You have to stay relevant and staying relevant now means to ta talk 
to be yourself to express who you are yeah. and to help people around you change and, and adapt to you and also reset your own goals exactly so it's okay like to, i thought i could do this by this or this is what i wanted to look like and then you know like for example i reset my goal of i think somewhere you know sometimes i look at my pictures from 5 years ago and like, wow i had that waist and i cribbed about it <laughs> like what was wrong with me can i get back to that i want to go back to that no you know no no you now have to look at it objectively you know you had a baby that baby's come out your waist has changed i had a very skinny waist right. and and now i i have to reset that goal and know that i can get there but i cannot obsessively where only if i get there i'll be happy awesome you know i'm happy even on the way there and if you and you and you have a problem with it that's your problem it's not mine Why? you know and and one more thing i have to say i meet so many girls you know and they're like something and they're like oh you know i, I have this thing here or you know i have this bulge here or you know my nose is a little like this you know samira i mean how do you cover this up i'm like number one the fact that you bought your flaw to my notice is your first flaw <laughs> don't be, i have tons of flaws I just will never bring it to your notice because you are walking in with that 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 clink you know that break in your chain and you're already saying here I am broken now I'm trying to put myself together you got to people feed off feel good mm. people feed off when you are confident yes and if you walk in with that extra 3 kilos but you own those 3 kilos and you move those curves and your hair is flying in every place because you're making it fly nobody will have the guts to come and say you put on a little weight or what and mm. even if they do it's like yeah but don't it look sexy yeah i'm feeling good more <laughs> me to love you know it's just that is the way you <laughs> carry yourself you carry yourself and i feel that people are coming only from the space of i'm trying to cover i'm trying to suck my stomach in yeah. my angle is like this my are chill that's you and it doesn't and the more you embrace it the less people are going to come up and give you gyan because everybody has gyan and you can only combat that by walking in only with i own this yes no matter what no is. matter what mm -hmm. you want to troll me or say it that's your problem you know you're being shallow it's your issue i can't change you but i have to stay happy where i am awesome so you know like i had a waist length hair uh, till last week and i had a mukku in tirupati uh, and i had to go i'm like next week i'm next month i'm going to be on stage with international speakers on the biggest conference ever and my interview with you is here and i'm i'm a president of an organization where every week i go and address more than 80 80 plus businessmen and when i had to give my hair i was like um, should i do it now or should i postpone it and then i said no let me do it now and let me experience what it feels like like when i just met you for the first time you remind me so much of Sh uh, you know shinedo kono she's a, a singer yes. and you came across so strong because what happens is when we take our hair back uh, your eyes and your you, you just came across very powerful yes which is something again like we we women get stuck with because a lot of men expect that long luscious hair right. so does my husband by the way <laughs> but i'm saying it is something that's inbuilt in our head and you have i i commend you because you first of all you did it for a certain reason that's your reasons and and it's beautiful and secondly you're owning it again i never thought for one second when i met you right now that oh wow you have shaved your head it was like wow <laughs> <laughs> like wow you know like i have more respect for you yeah and and i feel uh, because you owned it yes exactly yeah. this is this is exactly you know when i start when i wanted to do this interview i'm like she's owned herself like she's been the first person who's been a path breaker in the entire industry no one has come out like that i didn't that. see myself like that yeah actually. you are you are an example like i i made a wig done but i'm like no, no when she yeah. can do that oh. i can be myself and it's okay i mean it's perfectly so okay glad. yeah and we women should be confident in our own skin no yes. matter what it is yes. it could be n number of reasons life is not always great you know yeah. there are times when it was my weak moment when i had you know my son was sick and i thought you know when he gets better he had a major illness and oh. i thought i'll give my head to tirupati the moment it's done and luckily got I got a um, doctor's this thing clean shit that he's overcome it. Immediately the next moment I went and did it. My husband wow. did it. All my kids, like my entire family did it. That's amazing. Yeah, only because they want such a great story. Yeah, only because they wanted to be there with me when that's, I'm doing this. That's amazing. Yeah, and I'm like 
And here you are. It's like, it's amazing. I, I don't can't... think I would like that's something that's that's stronger than what I am trying to do. <laughs> no, but but what you're doing is uh, you're opening the gates for a lot of mothers who innocently uh, subscribe to the society's yeah. um, not so good part of it. The society supports us in great ways. But what we are not realizing is unconsciously we are putting our mothers through something which is beyond their, their capacity right now. Yeah. And uh, it is not relevant for this time. No. It is absolutely not relevant for this time. Educated girl who studied all her life, who who had had her, her own share of greatness, you know. Mm. She's worked somewhere, she's appreciated for whatever good work that she is. But she's becoming a mother by choice. Yeah. And that's not something to hide away from. And then you also get lost in translation where you lose yourself and then you have to, you get confused. You get confused with this notion of what is sold to you and the notion of what you thought of yourself and then you had a, a baby that comes and throws you off. Totally. And the combination can be quite disastrous. But you're handling it <laughs> so I'm well. well now. <laughs> Only four years. <laughs> so can you tell the transition where, yes, you were going through a bad phase, but you realize that you're going through it, you took help. And now you have come out so beautifully strong. It really took me a really long time because I told you the first year I just, you know, I was so big and so fat and I had a back problem, my knees were hurting. Uh, my husband, I remember it was very funny because he, he you know, <laughs> after I started losing the weight now he put his arm around me, he's like, wow, I can easily put my arm around me. I was thinking, wow, I never thought of that, you know. It was, I was that big. Yes. And, um, uh, the 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 thing is about a year after Hans was born, and I was just trying to lose weight, and I I'd start working out, and I'd break down and cry and not go. I'd go to the gym, people would say anything, I'd come back, I'd cry again. It was like this. Oh, it was exhausting. It's okay. exhausting. Just thinking about how many times I tried to go and fall down. It was not like some overnight like Olympic gold where I was like yeah overnight change Rocky music coming on and I was like running on bullshit I took so long of falling and getting up falling and getting up uh, and each time Akshay was there to hold my hand and then I got this autoimmune disease called alopecia areata mm -hmm. and I remember waking up one day and I just had two Clumps. inches of hair here and here at the back just fall off, fall off. Yeah. it was bald yeah. and I cannot tell you it just it messed with my head so badly yeah. because I'm like, how many more things can go wrong right now? True. A and a woman loves her hair, yes. you know. And, my, and I, I remember like, like I went to the doctor and he said, I'm sorry to explain, say this to you, but you, it's an autoimmune. It can come at any time of your life again. True. And uh, you just have to right now do steroidal in mm -hmm. injections. And that was somewhere where I realized it just pushed me across like the thing. And I said, okay, you know what? I need to take a step back and holistically look at there is some pressure point I have put on myself I have been dishonest and I have not taken this right and I need to make the right steps I started with homeopathy which a lot of people may not agree with yes but uh, it was so therapeutic because I literally went to her saying I'm, I have a nervous breakdown I can't recognize myself I'm having disassociation I sleepwalk I cannot I cannot come to terms with the fact that I was a girl that commanded so much respect but obviously it was a shell and inside it was shallow if I can break down like this and she said okay we're going to take time it's going to take you at least one year to see a complete difference she told me give yourself one year mm. and I very systematically went at it with counseling and homeopathy mm. and I'd fall I'd get up and I'd fall and I'd get up and it, it was maybe just maybe last July that I actually felt okay right. and when I felt okay I went up to Akshay during that like Diwali time and I said I'm ready and I said but but I had to it was so emotional to take that time to come yes. and say that I am ready because I am not breaking down anymore and in fact I have recognized a new me and you know he gave me that time to get there and I said now I'm ready to be pregnant I was, I refused to get pregnant when I was in a bad state awesome. because that would have been terrible for the second baby. And for you, and wh for what me. is that going to do to you? It's going no, to yeah. just push you so down. I had to solve that, 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 you know, I think it was beautiful because it made me absolutely come to a corner and then I had to work on myself, which has now empowered me to say, really, you have an issue with me? Wonderful. 
you think I'm a bitch, great for you. You think I'm fat, I don't care. It, it, but that only comes when you break to a point. Right. And you know, it's like the Japanese pot where they use gold and then they put you back together, mm -hmm. but you're even more stunning. And that's the journey for me. And, and, and I, I need to say this, that recognize you have a problem, take the help and then consistently work at yourself. So it's not like now I'm like, oh, right, I'm so great. I still have moments of self-doubt. I still have moments where I'm like, wow, what am I doing? But you have to, it's a work in, pro in progress. Okay. And that's most important to recognize. Beautiful, Samira. <laughs> I just don't have words for the honesty with which you have spoken. Because um, pregnancy is all about weight. Pregnancy is all about stretch marks. Pre pregnancy is all about tears. Pregnancy is all about the things which we are, we are not showing outside. But that's what mothers go through every single day. And for you to come out and talk so beautifully well. And um, this is what is needed right now. And thank you for being here. I'm yourself. so happy. And, and yeah. I, I thank you for having me. And thank you for being so candid. <laughs>